Hey y'all, this is Joe out at uh, here in Wheeling at the Mini Homestead. Sorry I haven't put up a video for a while. We've been pretty busy around here with here on the house, trying to get all the electric sorted out, get it fixed, and get it working. Uh, chickens are doing fine. We've had them a month now, collecting our four eggs today. And uh, Gail's getting ready, if you want to pan over, Gail's getting ready to give them some watermelon. They love watermelon on a hot day. Uh, why don't you stand up and come over here? Get your head out of there. Misha's trying to get in there, huh? What are you giving them? They want treats too. Uh, oh, got some watermelon. See if they go for the watermelon. Oh, yeah. Nothing like cold watermelon on a hot day, is there? Get some, Look Bertha. at that. <laughs> Come on, Bertha. Nice. Dang. They're tearing that stuff up. Well, there's too many people around now, and the dogs. Chicks don't care. Bertha. Lucille. Chasing up chicks. Alright. But, uh, like I said, we haven't had a, a whole lot of opportunities here to film uh, the last few days. Haven't been able to get out to the property. Uh, Gail and Nick's going out tomorrow. The, uh, I'm going on a road trip to Springfield, Missouri. Alex is going to go. Uh, work for Prime for a while, driving a flatbed. He wants to get a CDL and get some experience. And I went to Prime uh, and got my CDL and drove for a little while. It's a great company as far as I'm concerned. It's a good training program. And uh, he'll be getting paid while he's getting trained to be able to go out and make some decent money. Uh, so that'll be. That'll encompass the next couple of days. I'll shoot some video of that. But what I'm going to do on this video, you know, our generator got stolen. And uh, my neighbor has an electric pole. We measured it out last weekend. It's 220 feet from... Uh, Is it really 220 feet? 220 feet from the pole to our uh, tiny house out there. So what he said was bring some extension cords and do some power. So what he wound up doing was putting a couple of 20 amp breakers in a box for me and a couple of 20 amp receptacles uh, so I could just run a cord over. We were going to tie something into, uh, uh, into a panel and kind of like make it a permanent wire. Uh, but we don't, I don't want anything permanent. It's just going to be temporary electric. And just for when we happen to be out there on the weekends and stuff. I don't you know, want to be tying in stuff and running it underground and all this kind of stuff. So I went to Lowe's to look at extension cords. And uh, a 100 foot 15 amp extension cord is $89. And... Uh, I would need 200 foot extension cords and a 25 foot extension cord just to reach our tiny house. So, what I've decided to do instead, uh, instead of paying, you know, over $200 for extension cords, I bought a roll that the 15 amp cords are made with 12 2 wire. So, I bought a 250 foot roll of 10 2 wire with the ground and two ends and what I'm going to do is make my own extension cord that you know it's heavy it's very, this is very heavy but we can roll it out plug in it'll run you know fans TVs our mini fridge uh, 
uh, microwave, coffee maker, uh, the important things, some lights. The coffee maker. That's the most important thing is the coffee maker. And uh, uh, I'm going to make the extension cord. We can wind it back up. I mean, it won't roll up like easy like an extension cord, but this is house wire. It's indoor wire, I know that. But it's only going to be laying out in the yard uh, for the weekends, and then I'll wind it up and throw it back in the, in the house when we leave. Then we can unwind it and plug it back in. And we'll have power out there uh, without having to buy a generator. And this solution for 250 foot extension cord was about $110. Probably half of what I would have to pay for pre-made cords. And this will carry more amperage. It's bigger wire. And this I'm going to reuse. Because once I get my septic in and I get... Uh, the power run out there Then I will use this wire to go from my service panel in the house To the barn to run lights for the barn and I'll wire the barn with this wire so it's going to Not just be another extension cord hanging around. I'm going to get dual use out of it But what I'm going to do is try to show you how to make an extension cord uh, with regular house wire and this will work with any wires, if you got something that goes bad, an appliance or something that goes bad, you can cut the cord off of it, buy an end, you know, that part's still good, buy this part and make yourself another extension cord if your vacuum cleaner goes bad. Before you throw it away, cut the cord off. Have yourself, you know, a 15, 20 foot extension cord. Uh, so it'll work pretty much with all wires. But let me get set up and I'll show you how this goes together, how I plan on doing it. The only tools I'm going to need to do this are a utility knife, wire strippers, uh, needle nose pliers, a screwdriver, and some wire cutters. I use my side cutters. And what I'm going to do, give me a piece of this wire. This stuff is thick and stiff. And I know I need to go in about that far. I don't want to cut too much insulation back. God dang. The last That's of the year. crazy. So let me see if I can cut this some way. Turn without cut cutting yourself. the wire. Or cut yourself. Or cutting myself. And you'll see what you have in here is a black wire that's your hot you have a white wire that's your neutral and this bare wire uh, it will either be bare or it will have green vinyl around it uh, this is your ground hot ground neutral and if we look inside our plug here And what you have here are three prongs. This is your ground. See, it's green. Is it able to pick up the colors? I don't know if I could actually get on it. Your green screw is going to be where your ground goes, which is going to be on the other end of a three-pronged outlet that's your ground. That's why this is spread out further because it'll plug in like so. Um, but green is for ground. The brass colored screw is going to be for the black wire, your hot wire. And you put it on that color so you know when you put this on, you put it on the same color. You don't reverse your polarity or anything. And then the silver colored screw is going to be for the neutral wire. The white wire will go on there. So the three wires are going to go like so. And what you want to do is... Did you say uh, neutral twice? Hot, ground, neutral. Might have, I don't know. 
Uh, I want to strip off about a half an inch. Something like that is all I want. Well, actually, it's going to be like way too much. Let me uh, run this up through here if I can. I'm going to cut these now. I want enough that my insulation gets clamped down when I put all of this together. Uh, so I only need if that gives me enough. I'll uh, use my needle nose here to make me a little bend to go around the screws and hot on the neutral are you recording I am now the the hot side is on now I've got to do the neutral side it's going on the silver screw and just like before just doing the exact same thing this is a these plugs are actually made for uh, 12 gauge wire, but 12 gauge won't exactly carry the current that I want it to. So I'm going to force it to do what you want it to do. What I need it to do, because I don't want to buy 12 gauge wire. Come on, focus on. So. With a little bit of extra effort here and elbow grease, you can do it. Now I'll do my ground. And it's just the same for the other side, right? Yep. Yeah, you just have to make sure that the wires go hot on the brass colored screw, neutral on the silver colored screw, and ground on the green. That's all you have to do. But this is, 10 gauge wire is very hard to work with because it's very stiff. And uh, it's a pain in the butt. But it will carry the amperage. And that's what I need. Wired up. White is neutral on the silver screw. Black is hot on the brass colored screw. Ground is on the green colored screw. I think the green picked up. Ah, uh, but this is your ground plug. These two straight ones are the hot and the neutral. And now I can force this back up over. Maybe. Come on, cooperate. <laughs> Loosen it up some more. So there is our female end on the extension cord. Oh, let me. Okay. Nice and tight. Everything is tight. And ready to plug in my gang box. By gang box, what I mean is I have a shorter extension cord that will plug in here. And I've got on the other end of it a four way box, a junction box, with two 15 amp receptacles in it. 
so I can plug four things into that which will plug into this and the as you can see the male end <coughs> of the plug is you follow the same concept you put on the hot the, the hot on the brass neutral on the silver ground on the green and then you put it back together screw it back in put your clamp on it and you're good to go so I won't make you sit through uh, me putting this end on but you follow the exact same steps cut it back trim it and when you're done you're gonna have the mail in for this on the other 250 feet of this wire and that's how you make a 250 foot extension cord for hundred ten dollars instead of going and buying one uh, that would cost at least double that and it would only be 12 gauge wire so you wouldn't be you know your amperage loss is really quite simple to make your own 250 foot extension cord the thing to remember black is hot white is neutral green is ground hot goes on the brass colored screw neutral goes on the silver colored screw ground goes on the green colored screw this is indoor wire it's made for running the electric inside the house it's nothing I would leave outside forever like I said when I get there on Friday night I'll string it out plug it into the plug plug this into my gang box in the uh, house and there we have our power when we leave Sunday I'll go unplug it off the pole wind it up throw it in the house lock it up and have it for next weekend All right. so that gives us power while we're out there at the uh, at the house this is Joe sitting at the mini homestead in Wheeling wishing I was out at the big homestead at St. Bernard Acres uh, like I said I'm going on a road trip tomorrow with Alex going down to Springfield Missouri uh, I'm gonna drive drive him down there tomorrow and then spend the night and then come back Monday it's like a 760 mile trip one way <laughs> so I'll be driving about 12 13 hours but I'm not driving a commercial vehicle in my CDL it won't be a problem uh, in fact this is pretty cool there's how I can show you there's your plug this plugs right in <laughs> that's how it works so I hope you learned something from this and uh, this is how we're gonna make our extension cords so thank you all for watching that's a giant zucchini there's our giant zucchini the last of the season is the last zucchini of the year can't believe it's still growing out there uh, but thank you all for watching we'll talk to you later